Good morning, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us out here at the base. Base, thanks for turning the heat up a little bit in here uh, this morning. Uh, you know, we're here this morning to uh, to put some pen to paper for Senate Bill 189, and uh, I want to thank the governor for letting me make a few remarks to kick it off today. Uh, and thank you for being here in Sioux Falls uh, for this bill submitting. You know, in recent years, uh, we as government entities, we've uh, become increasingly aware of, of foreign governments and their impact uh, here at home, uh, not just on a national level, but uh, on a state level and, and on a local level as well. And uh, I, was, I was really first exposed to that concern uh, when I was, the, I was the chair of what's called the Intergovernmental Advisory Committee for the FCC. Uh, and at that time, there was a lot of discussion about uh, Huawei. Huawei is a Chinese-owned uh, telecom provider, They're actually the third largest uh, smartphone provider in the country, or excuse me, the world. Uh, they provide a lot of telecom equipment, and it was somewhat concerning to learn we had a lot of Huawei equipment here uh, in the United States. And so uh, Huawei as a provider has since been banned uh, here in this country, but it really was my first foray into learning about the, the threats that foreign countries can uh, can have here in uh, in the U.S. and here in South Dakota and even here in Sioux Falls. Um, I think it's also why we need to continue to look at things like like foreign land ownership, which I know the governor has been out in front of on uh, TikTok, uh, which for a lot of reasons uh, is uh, an app we need to keep our eyes on and, uh, and look at the influence of something like that. I think they're not just statement issues; they're very critical issues to our state, to our uh, local economy. So I'm very supportive of this legislation. I know I talked about it with our city procurement team. Uh, and when this first came out, I said, hey, how would this impact us in the city in terms of what kind of things we're procuring and from what countries and what, uh, what organizations and providers? And, and they were all about it. They were very supportive of the legislation uh, from the beginning, which started as an, an EO from the governor and uh, was eventually codified with the leadership of uh, by the gentleman behind me. So, I want to thank the governor, I want to thank the legislature for bringing this forward. Uh, and with that, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Governor Nome, uh, who helped lead this legislation and bring it to action. Governor? Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. It is an honor to be at the 114th Fighter Wing this morning. And I think it's incredibly powerful to see the visual behind us of how important national security issues are, not just to our country, but also to the state of South Dakota and the people that live here. I appreciate the mayor being here as well and his recognition of how important it is that we don't give a foothold to countries that hate us, uh, that we take proactive action to protect our citizens from having their data collected through applications like TikTok, that we also aren't engaging in contracts and getting supplies and necessary items from uh, countries and relying on them and allowing them to access our systems that people rely on every single day. My goal as governor each and every day is to keep our people safe, to keep their best interests in my number one priority and to make sure that we are looking for ways to keep their personal data secure as well. Uh, we've you've seen other states follow South Dakota's leads many times over. We were the state that started the action uh, to ban TikTok and its application when it comes to the state. And also to, we saw dozens of states take action after that and Congress now. I think even this week, Congress is having hearings on that application and other apps that may be collecting data on citizens and we need to make sure that we're continuing to engage in those conversations to ensure that Communist China does not gather information they can use to harm us and to destroy the United States of America. We took the lead in also issuing um, executive orders on foreign-owned ag land, land ownership in our state, making sure that we were protecting our land here in, the, in South Dakota from being purchased by entities that hate us. And then today we'll be signing a law that will move forward an executive order that I signed months ago to deal with contracts with state governments and other countries that are our enemies and work every day to destroy us. Senate Bill 189 is a law that will codify an executive order that I signed in January, restricts state and local governments from contracting with six different evil foreign governments. That includes China, Russia, Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, and North Korea. Uh, these nations uh, try to destroy us and will stop nothing to do so, and that's why it's incredibly important that we don't give them a foothold here in South Dakota. The 
Biden administration hasn't done enough, frankly, to keep Americans secure, but we can do all that we can uh, to ensure that we're being proactive on this national security issue. America is the greatest experiment in democracy. Uh, it is an experiment in self-governance, and it is something that does need to defend, be defended each and every day and passed on to our children. I'll do everything in my power that I can to ensure that our people stay as free as possible and that they remember why it is important. And if we lose a country like this one, where will we go to have more opportunity, to have more personal responsibility and more liberties than what we have here today? We have threats to that freedom on the horizon. If we don't take them seriously, we will lose the recognition of how special our country is. President Reagan said it probably uh, the most impactful way that we've seen it expressed in a generation. He said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to continue to do the same. For one day, we could spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like to live in a nation where men were free. I'll continue to fight for that freedom. I'll continue to make sure that we have proactive legislation and protections here in our state to give people in South Dakota the opportunity to thrive and to wake up every day grateful for the place in which they live. When you bring bills to the legislature, you ask people to carry these bills and to be sponsors of the bills that have influence, that when they speak, they have credibility, that they're someone that their colleagues listen to we know that they will do their homework and understand the facts around a piece of legislation, but also the consequences. The consequences on if it goes past, or what happens if it is not passed, or what happens if we are in a situation uh, that if this bill is passed in scientific law, what happens to the next generation. I have asked uh, Senator Stalzer, Representative Torson, to carry this bill this year, and they did that and championed it into law uh, because of their hard work and their efforts to make sure that it was done correctly, that it was something that could withstand any kind of a challenge, be it from the public, the federal government, or in the courts, and that it was something that was actually going to be beneficial for our children. Listen, whenever we deal with the bill during the state legislative session, what most people don't realize is that the governor's office goes through a bill analysis on every single piece of legislation. That bill analysis looks at what happens if this bill becomes law. What are the consequences of that? It also answers the question on what happens if this bill doesn't become law. If, what happens if we don't put this protection in place and what is the impact? The last question that I have my staff fill out and answer on every single one of those bill analyses is, what is the impact on the next generation? I can't think of another bill that we did this legislative session that has a bigger impact on the next generation than the one we're signing into law today. This one ensures that our kids and our grandkids will be free that we will continue to keep America special and protected, and it matters that we don't set up revenue streams to embolden our enemies. It matters who we do business with. It helps them be profitable. It gives them access to inside information that they can use to harm us. And South Dakota is, I believe, the first state in the country to be taking an action to go this far to protect our people. I think it's incredibly important, and we've already proven that when we take action, such as we are today, that other states follow our lead. On everything that we've done this year to push back on China, other states have looked to what we've done here in South Dakota, and they've taken action uh, to also do that in their states as well. When you have a failure at the federal level like we're seeing, it's important that states exercise their rights and that they recognize the real threats that we have and take action to protect their people. So right now I want to ask a couple of special speakers to come up and share some of their thoughts on this legislation and and why they were such a big part of bringing this forward. I'd like to invite Senator Stalzer to come up and share a few thoughts with you on this bill that we'll be signing into law. Thank you, Governor. But in the Air Force, I was an electronic warfare technician. My job before I retired included IT and uh, cybersecurity and banking industry. And ever since I've been in the Senate, I've been part of National Council of State Legislature Cybersecurity Task Force. Uh, in that fight for a 
spoken to multiple times a year by FBI and CISA and so on. So because of this, I started working with a group called China Tech Threat, who showed me that in South Dakota we had spent $30,000 over the last five years to buy computer and networking products that were uh, manufactured by companies owned by Chinese interests. Those were Lenovo and Lexmark. And then I had a conversation with Senator Rounds, who uh, addressed our caucus and made the same points that these two companies being owned by China collect data and that the Chinese law says that any data they collect is property of the Chinese Communist Party. So I drafted a bill basically to stop the purchase of computing and networking products from Chinese-owned and controlled companies. And in the process of working on the uh, occupational licensing bill, I gave a copy of the draft to the governor's staff who took it to the governor and the next day came back and said, well, we like, we like this bill a lot, but the governor is about to introduce a, an executive order and we think this would be a good vehicle to work together and implement her executive order in the statute. So from then on, I worked with the governor's staff. They did all the, the homework as far as the purchasing departments and other uh, groups to determine what the impact would be and work with us to get the final uh, version of this, which, like right now, Georgia has a law just for computing and networking. This goes way beyond that, and hopefully will be an example for the rest of the company, or in the rest of the country. And I do thank the governor and her staff for all their hard work in this, and uh, we honor the work of the law. appreciate your leadership. He was extremely proactive in his background and knowledge in this area from serving in the military and then also applying it afterwards. was very, very helpful in drafting this legislation and working it through the committee process. Next, I want to introduce Representative Torson. This is his first legislative session, and I would say that he definitely put his fingerprints all over South Dakota with how much he came in and immediately engaged on important legislation. He was one of the other uh, representatives that brought forward significant legislation to streamline occupational licensing to help us recognize licenses from out of state so that when people got here to South Dakota, they could immediately get to work. He also was a sponsor in the House on this piece of legislation uh, to make sure that we didn't allow evil foreign governments to have a foothold in our state contracts and systems and do business with the state of South Dakota and local governments. So I'd like to introduce Representative Torts and to come forward and say a few words if you would like to as well. Thanks, Governor. Well, at, at 30 years old, I, I get the pleasure of being the youngest legislator of this class. And I, I've joked, I don't know when I get to brag about that, and somebody told me probably when you mess up. And fortunately, I, I don't think I messed up yet. But uh, I say that because I really got to thank Senator Stolz for two as a, not only a veteran of his nation, Air Force, but as a veteran of the legislative process for allowing me as a freshman legislator to, to join this team and work with him on a couple big bills and help champion it to the House side. also want to give my thanks to the governor and her team uh, for all of their hard work on this legislation too, engaging the proper stakeholders and making sure that we had the refined language that we needed uh, to make sure that we're making sound policy decisions for South Dakota. I think this is yet another example of South Dakota leading the way on common sense. You know, nationally, we've seen efforts to uh, emphasize you know, buying American made first. And you know, we've seen some of these concerns, and uh, some of the previous speakers have mentioned that too, of these foreign owned companies that have these data and cyber capabilities that can spy on or hack our devices, or they're sharing this data with adversaries that don't have our best interests at heart. And so I think codifying this language in the state law just absolutely makes sense. It adds additional safeguards that protect South Dakotans and all of our state. It also provides the waivers where necessary too to make sure that we're being smart with who we choose to do business with as a state. And so, again, I just want to give my thanks to uh, Senator Salzer and uh, 101 of our other legislative colleagues that helped 
support this bill all the way through to get it to the governor to make the day possible. Thank you. We also have a special guest here today who um, was very helpful throughout the legislative process and supportive of this legislation. Brett Hoffman is here with us as well, so we'd like to welcome him and thank him for being here to see this bill signed into law. Um, I want to close with a brief history lesson on the South Dakota Air Guard and how this base ended up being here and why it is so incredibly important that we're proactive on national security issues. And what an example South Dakota has been for many, many years. The South Dakota Air National Guard began when Colonel Fred Gray came to Sioux Falls to talk about starting a base here. He said that he wanted every single national, every single state to have a National Guard flying wing and that he wanted to establish that. At that time, the mayor of the city suggested that he contact Joe Foss to be the person to start that and to start that initiative here in South Dakota. Before accepting that offer, though, it was interesting because Joe Foss replied back uh, to the colonel before he would accept the position. His biggest question that needed to be answered was, will we get airplanes? He wanted to make sure that there was going to be aircraft here and that it was something that he could dig his fingers into because, of course, he was a world-famous fighter pilot and ended up being South Dakota's youngest governor when he was elected. Now, over 70 years later, we're standing here at the 114th Fighter Wing, and that is named after that leader, Joe Foss, and it is the mission of the 114th Fighter Wing to deploy worldwide to execute directed tactical fighter sorties to destroy enemy forces, supplies, equipment, communication systems, and installations with conventional weapons or when directed by the governor to protect life and property, preserve peace, order, and public safety. We appreciate the service of our National Guard. Our Air National Guard is the finest in the nation. And we're very proud today that we're here with them to deal with another national security uh, issue that our state is facing. It's a different method to protect our citizens, but it is extremely important that we use every tool we have in the toolbox to make sure that the freedoms that we enjoy today will remain for generations to come. Our National Guard protects our freedom abroad so that we don't have to do it here today. But if we can help them by fending off any of the threats that we may face from countries that hate us, such as China, Russia, Iran, Cuba, Venezuela, North Korea, we should do that. And our taxpayer dollars should not go to enrich the revenue streams of evil foreign governments. Today we are clearly making that stand here in South Dakota. With this legislation, South Dakota will continue to be the beacon of freedom to the rest of the nation, and we will continue to lead by putting the security of our people first and taking action when necessary. So with that, we will move to signing this legislation into we're going to do this a little bit different, and I'll explain it to the folks behind me. We're going to take a picture, just smiling. I'm going to move the microphone out of the way. Then we will do a pretend signing while we're looking down while I'm signing. And then I will actually read the title of the bill and sign it into law. Sound good? Okay, you guys all scooch up. That was totally a grammar word. Three, two...
know, I would say on that topic, a lot of the discussion that happened around the release of those papers had to do with people's personal financial information. Um, we're continuing to always evaluate if there's something the state needs to do to take action, and that's something that I'll continue to make a priority as well. Yes. Um, so what is it that you kind of hope this bill will help protect in South Dakota, and what is it that makes these um, countries evil? Well, it is part of their foreign policy to destroy the United States of America. Clearly through their actions that they take, the fact that they are not republics, not de de democratic countries that truly do embrace not only just human rights, but also the rights and freedoms of the people that live there, and the actions that they take to aggressively go after the United States of America as well, um, shows their true colors on what their agenda would be. Uh, for us, it's important to take these kind of actions because it's powerful when we do business with someone. Uh, the, a lot of foreign policy and national security issues are addressed by trade policies. They're addressed by doing business in a region. Um, I worked for years when I was in Washington, D.C. I served on the Armed Services Committee, but I also served on the Ways and Means Committee, which was in charge of all of our trade agreements and negotiations with other countries. I worked on policy when it was regarding peace agreements when I was there as well and how they were set up to be facilitated and what we could do to make them more successful. It is very clear throughout history that whenever we do business with another nation, it becomes a friendlier neighborhood. When we are doing and exchanging commerce with them, uh, barriers break down, there's more communication, there's more access to systems and information in that country because you were doing business and having commerce with them. When that is a country that hates us, we should not be doing business with them. We should not be allowing them to access our systems. You saw the South Dakota legislature endorse one of my budget items this year, which was a very, very large investment into our IT systems. We put tens of millions of dollars into upgrading our cybersecurity systems, our programs that we use to help protect them, um, our server upgrades, and also to address our accounting systems. I think people would be shocked if they realized how much personal information the state of South Dakota has on the citizens that live here. Think of anyone that interacts with a program. If it's child protective services, we have those family members' information there, those case files. If it's within our Department of Health, look at the amount of information that they may have that you all have experienced over the last several years when it comes to the pandemic and other vaccines or other interactions people may have with their community health centers. If you look at someone who is doing business with the Department of Tourism and the information that may be collected from booking hotel reservations or credit card information that may be entered into game fish and parks to buy the hunting licenses, we hold a lot of private information that it's extremely dangerous if it gets into the wrong hands. We've taken steps to make sure it's going to be safe, but we're also going to take steps to make sure we don't allow the wrong people to access it. And that includes other countries that would use it in nefarious ways uh, to hurt our people, and to hurt our state, and to hurt this country. Another piece of this web of policy is about South Dakota economy, government as well as the insidious as the policy. Um, have you reflected at all on the reasons that that went down and what you can do in the interim to be able to back this? Yeah, Jason's asking about the bill that I proposed and brought to the legislature to ensure that China couldn't own our egg land. Um, and that bill was not successful this year, although I am currently working on what I can do as governor to ensure that China doesn't get a foothold here in South Dakota. Um, if you look at the last decade, they have increased their purchase of United States farmland by over 5,000%. Listen, we can't allow these countries to come in and to become our neighbors, especially when you are home to Ellsworth Air Force Base, which is going to be the home to the next platform that will defend this country. I'll also be asking the legislature to, to consider this bill again. I think it was something that wasn't on their radar, uh, that they believed some information from our egg groups that necessarily wasn't factual in how it would work and how it would relate, and they were concerned about business issues uh, not being timely. But there are many other states that are using our model, and it's gaining a lot more knowledge and information around it, and we'll continue to make sure that we don't allow other countries like this to come in and purchase up our assets, such as land, that, that then we cannot undo. Are there any other state-owned industries outside of computing that are currently doing the business that they're doing in South Dakota that would be impacted by this law? By the law that we signed into law today? Yeah. Uh, 
Well, there could be. We're doing, you know, this is in regards to contracts. We've gone through with our Bureau of Information and Technology and looked at all those contracts that we have and are conducting with other companies. We haven't had other companies um, express concerns with us. We also have over a thousand companies that have already certified to us that they do not um, do business with these countries. So I think overwhelmingly the business community in South Dakota and those that we currently are doing commerce with, they endorse this idea, they're all on board and they're willing to certify to us that they will obey the law as it stands and they're grateful that we brought it forward. in regards to foreign egg land ownership is that there is no reporting requirement and there is no enforcement mechanism, which is what we were trying to address with legislation this year. We didn't want to ban other countries from coming in and purchasing our land because we recognize it's important to be remain business friendly in South Dakota. It's important to evaluate every single purchase and see if it really is something that is bad for our state or something that should move forward to help our citizens here get more opportunities in the future. Um, that's why we set up the CFIUS model, the Committee on Investment, um, because it would review every purchase and if it had concerns, refer it to the governor with a recommendation. Other states are approaching all out bans, which I think is very anti-business and people will get hurt and there'll be good people who maybe um, there's confusion about how their business model is set up that will not get to move forward with a purchase because of that. Our review process, I believe, was the best approach, um, and it had a committee that specifically looked at every purchase and then could make recommendations on if it should move forward or not. step right into a career that, that will help them. 
What happens is if they come to Pierre and they're from Sioux Falls or from Rapid City or from somewhere far away, when they go back home, they have to go find a new position, all new beginnings, adjust to all the changes that they're going through, and that only adds more stability. So I think it's going to be wonderful to see that women's facility built out and then also have a large chunk of investment being made into addressing our men's facilities um, and what we're seeing here for issues at the penitentiary in the future, too. Two more questions, Go ahead. Yes. Um, in your veto of the UCC bill, you mentioned that you were concerned it would make cryptocurrency harder to use. Mm -hmm. um, advocates such as South Dakota Bankers Association say it will make crypto more available and more easy to use. So what information have you seen that counters that? Well, the, the facts of other entities that have addressed that veto letter have agreed with me, not the Bankers Association. They have said specifically what the language in this UCC bill updates is, is that it impacts currently existing um, cr cryptocurrencies, currencies that are available out there today. So if in the future a federally um, established CBDC is established and put into place, it would invalidate those that are currently in existence today. Um, you know, I think that that shows clearly that it would pave the way for more domination of a federal CBDC, uh, that it is something that this UCC guidelines does not get implemented until 2024. Um, I would encourage the bankers to come back with clarifying language um, that would make sure that we're protected from invalidating other currencies that may be out there. They talk about you know, electronic records you know, they're just redefining something but not addressing the actual concern that's out there by invalidating current um, uses that are out there to establish a federal one if it is in the future um, should be should be a bit alarming to everyone and needs to be addressed. Last question. Uh, you signed the budget, you signed the tax holiday. Do you have anything to add to um, the center show that can be critical of you and your staff for folks that are outside the state? Listen, you guys know Senator Schoenbeck almost as well as I do. Um, that's his way of saying he loves us all, right? If he doesn't kick us in the teeth once a week, then that means the guy uh, the guy isn't uh, doing what Senator Schoenbeck has done for decades. So that's just his personality. citizens and people are struggling right now with escalating food costs. I also like the fact that we got a lot of people living on fixed incomes here that are struggling with inflation and it would have benefited them extremely much, much more than, than what the current sales tax reduction would have done. So, um, you know, I do believe it will pass. Overwhelmingly, the people of the state have said that they want it. If it's on the ballot, I do believe it will pass and the legislature will have to figure out what they're going to do. Are they going to raise the sales tax rate again in order to make sure that they can make the grocery tax work? I don't I don't know. I've asked for that plan from their leadership and Senator Schoenbeck. Um, you know, he does not have an answer. They have not been visionary in how they've solved that problem. In fact, uh, Senator Schoenbeck came into this legislative session saying he did not want to do any tax cut or reduction whatsoever. So, I'm at least grateful that the leaders behind me recognize the need to let some of the people of South Dakota keep more money in their pockets. That's a good thing. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.